welcome to the show. We do get asked a lot of times from people, what's it like being a business coach and what does it do for clients? That's a great question to ask, what does business coaching do and what does it do for clients? Is really powerful because that is often a question I get asked. You know, what is business coaching really about? And what I want to do and what business coaching is for me is to help bring the dream that's on the inside of the person that they know they've got and they get distracted with life. They get distracted with business, they get distracted with all sorts. And what I want to do is help bring that dream out that they got and help it become a reality. And when I see that happening, that is for them. They see it happening for them. That's the power of what business coaching does for me and for, for people in business. And it's just absolutely thrilling. I'm John Hardy and my business is Peak Consultancy. So John, I know you haven't always been a business coach, but what was your first job? My very first job? Um, I was an electronics apprentice. And I did that, um, and I did the what was called the pre-apprenticeship course through Matt Lawley TAFE um, here in Western Australia. And I trained to be an electronics technician. And then I worked for Canberra Television. And the motto was, nobody can like Canberra can. It was a national company. And I was one of their apprentices, and then I became a technician. Wow, we, that's a massive change. What, what do you think you actually took from that? What made you change careers, I suppose, is the first question. Well, I looked down the years, and I saw 40-year-olds doing what I was doing, exactly the same thing. And I thought, no, that is not going to happen for me. I'm not going to do that. And I began to ask the question, what do I do next? And I looked at computer engineering and I looked at theology. So they were the two things about what I would be doing next. And what one was it? I chose theology. Wow. Yeah, which was really interesting. What has that done for you by choosing theology? How has that affected the path you've been on now? Um, it is interesting because it became, it, it was part of my very fibre of being and I knew that in the environment I was in, that was a natural course for me to step into, the same was computer engineering. So that was when the computers were XTs. So that was way back. And I was really excited about both potentials. I, I could develop a career very positively, it would give me room to grow and develop. Whereas an apprentice technician and being a technician and maybe being a supervisor of a workshop really didn't excite me. There wasn't a very strong career path where both of them gave me strong career paths. And they've taken me to um, leadership right around the nation, where I've been involved in, in key leaders, both at st um, local area, state level, and, and some national influence. And that really excites me about the potential to grow me as a person. And that's been fun. And being involved in locations right across Australia has been a thrill as well. So yeah, that's what I got up to. John, what did you buy with your first paycheck? What an interesting question to think about what I actually bought with my first paycheck. And it wasn't overly significant for me. I think I simply spent it on myself. And I think my parents would have liked some money because I was still staying at home, but I don't think they got any. <laughs> John, you've had a varied career coming from technician, theology, business culture. What new skills do you think you've acquired along the path that, that's got you this success you've enjoyed today? Um, the new skills that I've acquired along the way, I think the list is quite long. I think the fundamental for me, I've learned about the power of leadership. Um, because there is many people looking for a future and they're looking for people to help them get there. I think that's one of the powerful skills that I've learned, the power of what leadership can do and how you can influence the many through influencing and working with key people. So it's like, it's a filter down. Um, in, in, in theology, there is a principle of, of the mentor with the mentee, but the mentee finding um, someone that they can mentor and then that person finding someone they can mentor, it's really powerful. And I think that's a, a very powerful skill. I've learned to listen. Um, I used to be a very strong teller. 
um, because I'm fairly bold out front. Um, I'm, I can be a bit of the life of the party and I can tell people what they need to do. I think the powerful thing of learning to step back and listen and using, you know, that I've got two ears and one mouth is a very powerful tool uh, that I've learned. I've learned to love. Um, I think one of the things you realize in life is not everybody does it your way. You don't always get it right. And the power of what love can do, because love covers, it doesn't expose. And so um, I remember going through a challenging time, coming out of that, and looking at a colleague of mine was going through a challenging time, and my wife said, remember, I said, yes. And I didn't expose, I covered, and I expressed love, and he's, he's a really good friend. And he's went on to do some really, really cool things. The power of what love does is amazing. And I think I've grown in maturity in my relationship with my wife. And that's one of the powerful things. You know, we fall in lust and we grow in love. And she's my best friend and I've learned to practice that with her, not exposing her, but um, building her up and allowing her to become all that she has and all that she can be and doing things because I love her. It is a powerful lesson because most of the time I can be quite selfish. And so doing that has been really powerful. So there's a few principles along the way that are, are preeminent for me. Well, you talked about your wife and, and love and you said you, you like doing things for yourself as well. Mm. And I think that's important for business owners in general. And how important is it and do you have hobbies? And I think hobbies are really helpful because this is part of renewing your soul refilling your tank, those kind of dynamics. So I'm a walker, I'm a swimmer, and I really enjoy those dynamics. If I get out in the outdoor world, it just refills my soul. It's not that I'm um, a greenie per se, I want to protect the environment, and it really is important. I enjoy the environment, and I just enjoy swimming because it stills my mind from the busyness of the world, and I really don't mind swimming lap after lap after lap, that's not a burden. I had, I, in the early days when I was doing this, I swam with a sprinter and I could never beat him. Every, every session, we would always finish with a sprint and he would always beat me. I would work really hard, but I'm not a sprinter. I, I can just do lap after lap. I really enjoy that. I enjoy long walks. I enjoy reading. Um, I find that incredibly enlightening to expose my mind to think. And I find that really helpful. So by my chair, I have my books that I want to read. So they are probably the strong hobbies uh, that I enjoy. And of course, I really do enjoy time with my wife. It's pretty cool. John, a lot of people are either looking at getting in business or are in business for themselves. And I think one of the questions is, what does it mean being in business for yourself? What does it mean to you to be in business for yourself? What does it give you? Yeah. What, to, what does it mean to me to be in business myself is I have, in a sense, a control of my destiny. I can do what I want to do. I can dream what I want to dream. I can fulfill my passions and it gives me great liberty to um, a great um, expression about where I want to go and, and what I actually want to do with my time. And it's just fun. I, I really enjoy that I'm in control of where I'm spending my time and I can be as creative and as energetic or as motivated or as demotivated as I want to be. And I love the fact that I can engage in that. And I've got a great dream for the next 10 years of what I want to do in, and be in business. And my fundamental is I want to multiply myself into others in the coaching mentoring space and to be recognized as a leading coach um, and you know they're, they're just thrilling things to be a part of and I can imagine those things and the power of imagination is almost unlimited resource for us to engage in and because of that and because I work with a variety of people it's always challenging about you know I'm just back from holidays I've already had a couple of sessions and they've been very powerful sessions you know and I, it's just thrilling to see the objectives that people come in with 
and the gaining of insights that they get that they can put into place straight away is absolutely thrilling. You talk about the insights other people have and the objectives and, and mm -hmm. how you help them through that. How have you managed to do this for yourself? How have you managed to manage this career of yours to get to this level of success you, you're actually enjoying today? Fundamentally, it's what Thomas Edison talks about. It's 95% perspiration and 5% inspiration. You work hard, and I work hard, but I enjoy the fruits because, because I've got a strong people skill. I build relationships with people fairly easily, and it doesn't worry about me walking into a room of new, strange, different people. I can do that easily and strongly, and it's fun to do. And I can see potential. I can dream dreams. I can see what they see and understand and help them bring clarity so they can see it. Because once they get it, there's no point in me seeing it. If they, my job is to help them see it so they can run with it. And, that, and so that's what I've done for myself. And I've, I'm embarking on re-envisioning my whole business. And it's been a really great exercise to plan through what this actually will look like for me. So I've got that skill. So I take my people through um, paying the rent, strategic thinking, visionary planning, and you know, 10 years out, I've done that a few times now, and it's easier to do it now because I've done it a number of times. You practice, and you practice, and you practice. It's like they talk about being a master, spending the 10,000 hours to be a master. I have put in the hours. You talk about the 10,000 hours and how you've actually got to a success level you've got to, but reflecting back, what do you consider was your first break or your first couple of breaks that never did you get here? Um, it was interesting. For me, there was a little bit of the divine appointment and two things. One, I had the opportunity to do a consultancy with a business that had drifted away from the core. And I was brought in to be the strategic consultant to bring it back from it being adjacent, doing what it was doing, but distant from the core. And so my job was to bring it back to the core. And that was a whole bunch of fun. That was a nine month project. That was a significant break opening. The other one was a conversation about networking. Um, and uh, um, a gentleman called Kerry said, John, it would be really good for you to do this to network and since then for me I am involved in numerous networking kind of groups of all sorts of um, agencies and styles and types I think I put it down once that I'm connected to about 22 different groups of some source or another and that was a significant break for me understanding uh, the power of it and my other conversation was my colleague saying to me, um, knock on doors, just knock on doors. It's interesting you say how it was people advice or mm. guidance. So do you have mentors, John, and do you, yes. and what's your, what's, your, what's your conversation around mentors? Um, so I have a colleague in Brisbane who has been my mentor coming into this whole world of coaching um, the coaching world. Um, his name's Colin and he's great and he's become, yes he's in front of me as an experience wise, but he's become a mental colleague yeah, um, and that's been really powerful and you know we had a conversation in December of 2017 about where I'm going and how he can help me. It's so cool. Um, I have a coach currently that I'm working with um, and working on a particular project um, and that's been part of envisioning the business going forward for the next 10 years and getting the foundations right. And I've got a number of other people that I seek out advice from, colleagues, friends that I um, have over the years, and I find them invaluable. that You can sit down and have a conversation with, um, and they're trusted advisors that you can bear your soul to, and they're not going to expose you they're going to listen to you and they don't necessarily have to say or do anything sometimes it really is just listening to you and having a coffee and it really is quite quite cool 
a business owner listening who is on that path who may not have a mentor at the moment or may have a couple but is a bit like mm, I'm not too sure how do you go about identifying who's the right mentor for you is there any tips yeah, for right. someone to look at it's that? a great question to ask how do you find the right ones sometimes it's trial and error and sometimes it's trial and error let me do that one first and you figure out whether they actually resonate with you it's really important Sometimes it's seasons that you will have somebody more significant in your world for a season and it's not necessarily forever. And I think sometimes what we do with coaches and mentors, we think, oh, we've got to tie ourselves to them for life. Now, I've got clients that have been with me seven or eight years and we're still working hard and strong um, and we're seeing some really cool things happen. And so that season is not yet finished. But it's, it might, and I've had clients with me for six months and it's been the right season just for them for that time. So I think you've got to understand and I think you've got to ask the question, will you mentor me? Will you give me some of your time? And I think people need to be aware that the world is a good place and there's a lot of good people who are happy uh, to give time if you value them, not abuse them. And, you know, so that's really important. So ask the question. John, a lot of people are shy of getting into business, and some people are in it. Um, do you feel the burden of owning and running your own business? No. I love it. <laughs> uh, business is great. You know, in, in this nation of Australia, I think 80 to 90% of all business is done by people like myself. And we actually are a very strong part of the very core of the economy of our nation. And I love being a part of that. I love playing my role in adding value to the people in whom I work with and connect to. And seeing them, like I said, I've said earlier, is about helping them realise their dream. Because if I help them realise their dream, I grow, they grow, we grow. The power of, of connection and connectivity um, is really amazing. You know, there's a principle that says if you stand alone, you get easily picked off. But a brother who stands close to a brother, you know, is, is strong. And then it goes on to say um, um, a threefold cord is not easily broken. So the power of doing those things, bringing those things into your world is amazing because you get stronger by it, you actually don't get weaker. Even though you might tell your weaknesses, even though you might struggle in some areas, you actually will become a better person, a better father, a better son, a better brother, a better husband, a better business, a better colleague, better friend, because you become a better person, because you're wrestling with the junk that sometimes is getting in your way, and some of the misvalues, the misfires, and you get to resolve them. You get to grow. And so that adds great value to our nation, becoming a, a better place to live and breathe. And so I don't feel it's a burden, and I love doing it. John, you've been in business for a while now, for a long time. Yes. <laughs> Always been nice because you're very young. Wouldn't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, seriously, do you have any regrets, uh, personally or professionally, about being in business for yourself or going into business for yourself? Um, to ask the question about regrets or disappointments or should I, should I, could I, would I, the answer in simple terms is no. Um, because I, I'm, I'm, I've just started my 17th year as a, in business, I'm more excited today than ever before about what it's doing in my world and what it's doing with the people I'm working with and the potential to impact more you know, what I've done the last 17 years, I probably can do in the next 10 years. So it's, in a sense, it's more intense, more able, more insightful, more confident, more competent, um, you know, and I, I can see myself really enhancing the world in which I'm actually going to impact on multiple levels. You know, I'm looking at executive impact, I'm looking at business impact, I'm looking at you know, startup impact, you know, I'm looking at educational impact, I'm looking at large church impact, you know, so the variety for me is really quite amazing. And I think, um, I think sometimes businesses look at the world in which we live 
is challenging. But hey, it's not changed from any time in history. The world has always been challenging. The economy is always the economy that it is. It's the attitude creates the altitude and it gives you that ability. And so by taking my three step A's is the actions that you take, the attitudes that, that you have creates the altitude that you will rise to. And I think that's the fun gig. I know that there is more. So my motto is, as you know, Michael, climb the mountain, see the view. I want to continue to do that for myself so there's no regrets or burdens. And I really am passionate about wanting to do that for those that in and around my world. You've been in business for 17 years in this particular yeah. industry that I know as a, as a business coach and helping and mentoring and all the rest. But how has your family grown through that? How have they managed to cope with you know, husband and dad, because you've got two boys and I know they're in business mm. for themselves now. Mm. How have they managed to cope with you actually being in business and running a business yourself? They love it. They see that I am thriving. And they don't see it's a burden for me, they see it as a blessing for me, for my, my, uh, my wife, um, Patty, and for us as my son, Jared, Nathan, and Talitha. And they've now got their families, and all of them are in business which is just fascinating uh, as well. And, and I think um, there is the power of influence that is subtle. My boys are in the construction industry because of their granddad or their papa, and because he built his own home. And in their office is a picture of the house that dad built, you know, my wife's dad. And it's really cool. And it, it, he loves coming over and they love taking him around, showing him what they're building. But I'm in business, they're in business, and there is the influence that parents have that sometimes children don't fully grasp or understand, and we as sometimes as parents don't grasp or understand. But I'm in business, they're in business, and they're doing great, I'm doing great. They love it, I love it. We're loving what we're seeing and we're doing, and we're making a difference in society, and it is so much fun. And they can see a brighter future, because they grew up on one income, they don't feel bad for that. We have lots of stories that we share around the family table about us growing up on one income. And it's not held them back, it's not limited them. They're just dreaming a dream and they can see the possibilities of what they can do. And they're loving the fact that, hey, we grew up on here, we, we, we grew up on hard times. They went to the royal show taking their own lunches with them. And they remember that and they value it, sitting on the lawn, eating the lunch that mum had prepared. Great memories, but it empowers them to realize that um, life is not just roses, there's thorns, and they understand that really well. And they, they really want to add value to the world in which they um, have, and that's what I want, that's what I'm about. John, you talk about challenges in life, and obviously being in business for yourself, there are many challenges. Mm. And it requires certain strengths to get through them. Yourself, as a business owner, mm. what do you think your strengths are that have got you to the success level you've got? Um, I've actually done what's called the Strength Finder, which is really cool. Um, and I know, um, because I've talked a little bit about this with you, I am a futurist, a visionary. I can see into the future really easily. I'm a communicator. Um, you can stand me up in front of a bunch of people and I'm, I'm not gonna go to jelly. I'll have done my work and I will engage with the crowd. So I'm a communicator both in a crowd but also one-on-one. -on -one. I'm an activator. I love releasing people into their potential. So I, I've got a bunch of skills that I know I have and I let them resonate with me, and I work at them, letting them really come to the fore of who I am. And I know I'm a leader. I know I'm an influencer. And I know I make a difference. And people sit up and take notice when I speak, because I speak with wisdom. I speak with clarity. I speak with thoughtfulness. Um, and I've done, that work is my past. And all of that, even my 17 years and my 20 years in theology before that, and my years before that in the electronics industry, all that to this moment in time that I bring to the world of both the one-on-one -on -one conversations or the group conversations, all of that is bringing that 
into the world. And I, I know I can conceive uniquenesses for that individual person. And I, I think about that when I'm sitting in coaching and I'm listening to the story or the questions my clients are asking me. And there is something about aha. And so I turn that into a question. And they then look at me with, oh, he's pushing me to think. And I just let them think. One thing that strikes me when it comes to your strengths, you're very confident about your strengths and, and you know what they are and you embrace them and you, as you say, you build on them. When you first start working with clients, do you find that some business owners, they've got strengths but they're a little bit shy about them? Oh, absolutely. The biggest one, uh, and we have discussed this previously, the biggest one is lack of confidence. I have it over and over and over and over and over again. And I love building confidence into people. So I was having a coffee with a client this morning before I came here, and her biggest challenge is right now she's indecisive. I just said, between now and the next time I see you two weeks, I want you to make some decisions. Do this one and this one. And let me know what happens. And it's funny to watch her. And she says, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And learning to help her believe in herself and have confidence, it's just gonna change her future. And that is so much fun. But that is the biggest challenge most people struggle with because this is the conversation that's going on inside of them. I'm not okay the way I am. And I will tell you that in the way I actually engage with you, the way I lead my business, the way I tell you about how I handle money, the way I interact you with the way I communicate. And multiple levels are telling you I'm not okay the way I am. And I help people, you are okay. Because you were wonderfully made, uniquely made, and you've got a unique purpose on this planet. And I'm gonna help you, if you will let me, to actually make that become a living reality. So confidence is their biggest challenge. And because I'm a, a, an encourager, a confident person, and I try to do it with humility, I don't always get it right, but I really try to walk that, strength with, with mercy and kindness and gentleness, but be strong in that space. Um, it actually transposes, they pick it up and they begin to run with it and it's pretty cool. Well, I guess the obvious question is, John, you've come so far, 17 years, what next? What next for John Hardy and Peak Consultancy? Well, it, it is interesting, Michael, to ask that question of what next, because I'm actually going through that myself and my wife we're transitioning out of church leadership that we've done for 40 years and full time into the what next and so this last year um, i've been working hard on really positioning my business into the what next and my and particularly doing that in the internet world and rebuilding my whole website presence to be a very clear message about John Hardy, the coach. And so it's going to be, my name will be their peak consultancy, but clearly the message is, this is John Hardy bringing this into your world in many dynamics. So the small business world, the large business world, the education world, the large church world, and a couple of other areas. Um, and I know that that plan is being laid, the foundation is being laid, but there's also a sense of, I don't know how it's actually going to unfold. And that's the exciting part of life. And I have a, uh, if I express it this way, a super confidence because of my personal faith that I don't have to fret, worry, stress, or be fearful about that because I know in whose hands I'm held. And it's really cool. And so my faith is very powerful for me and so I know as I walk into that space, I can walk boldly, courageously, full of faith, step into that space and trust. And so it's not like, you know, the, the language of the, the um, uh, if you sow it, you know, it'll all sort itself out. I know that that is not just about the, the world kind of kept bringing it back to me. There is principles at work that I know I live by. 
that will actually take care and take place. So I'm working hard at laying the foundation for the next phase of my business. I'm looking at multiple opportunities. I'm looking at raising up coaches. I'm looking at impacting nations, not just a business. And that's really exciting. I'm not sure how that will unfold, but that's part of the, dr the drive and the dream. My wife, because of her change, might come into the business and take on some areas, and that's gonna be really interesting. And I've been thinking about what next for her, and my wife is an amazing leader. And for her to do mentoring to women, and it's a huge marketplace, and there is a real lack in that space of competent women doing that and delivering that, and I think she would do an outstanding job. So I think the dreams are, they're focused, there's some very clear directions, but I think it's almost unlimited, the what next. Um, but I do know the what next. There is some what next actually will happen, and I'm really excited about what that will be. And I know I'm deliberately working towards a very clear purpose uh, for my business. So John, as a successful business person, 17 years just in this particular business, mm. which is absolutely outstanding, what, through the time, what do you think is your number one piece of advice for people either going into or are in business for themselves? I think the number one thing is, is if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So whatever that plan might be, however you might do it, whether it's a full-blown business plan that you give to a bank, or whether it's a one-page statement with five items on it, it doesn't really matter. But it matters that you think about planning and you plan. And my other one to balance, to add to that, that really helps that work, is your time doing strategic thinking and allocating a deliberate time in your world to do strategic thinking. Because then if you have your plan, whether it's your 90 day plan, your one year plan, your three year plan, your five year plan, your 10 year plan, all of those are really powerful and they will help you. And I have those for my my world and my life. Um, but it's, it's then engaging that plan as a companion, not a carrot, that's really dynamic and flexible to the world in which you live, but your strategic thinking, taking elements of that plan and to stop, to reflect, to step back. I can't see the wood for the trees. See the wood for the trees. Step back, step out of your world. Either do that by yourself uh, or do that with your mentor, your coach, but do it deliberately and in a regular fashion. You just imagine if you spent one hour a week, 52 hours stopping to think about your business, your world, your life, an element, and you think and cogitate and wrestle with it and research it, the potential that's inside of you to see that uh, be strengthened and empowered and amazing, we, we don't let that happen for ourselves because we don't do it. And I've stolen this from a principal who was retiring, who said in a question, what have you learned over your years? And she said, stopping to think and always communicating. And so for me, that the power of the plan is you communicating what it is that you really are about and where you're going. And it could be simple as a day, a week, a month, a quarter, a year, but doing it deliberately, but stopping to think. And doing those two things, if you did that in, hey, beginning of a year, and it's a really cool time to say, what could I do differently? Because um, my wife and I are going through a change, and one of the questions I've used to illustrate that is, if we keep doing the same thing to expect different results, we're actually going to be going insane, and that's not good. And we could see we would be doing exactly the same thing that we did last year, and that's not good. So we knew, over the processing of this whole conversation that we've walked through, we knew we needed to change, stop, make a big difference, and so we have done that. And so that's really, really important because we've spent many times stopping to think about the plan for our future, and it's made a huge difference. It is unsettling, 
it's it's um, you know you go on a bit of a roller coaster, but once you get through it, the difference that it will make into your world. And I think Michael, that's why you add the value of a coach in your room, because there's few people that can grasp that conversation with you and can reflect it back at you and hold the confidence of it rather than expose you because you share it with the wrong people they will expose you and they will abuse it in you but having a coach who you know you can trust and hold confidence is powerful to reinforce the plan and reinforce the strategic thinking and that's what i know that i love doing and being a part of the world of the people and organizations that i work with John Hardy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Business Profiles today. Thank you so much. It's been great to be able to do Business Profile because I think people hearing what I do do and hearing me making those connections, they're hearing more of my heart and my story. And it's fun to be able to share this with you and, of course, with those that both listen to us on radio and watch us on TV. And it's great to be able to do it.